The third most common misconception is Muslims are terrorists. And after 9 11, you had the 7th July, that was the London bombing. And there was a common statement which said, All Muslims are not terrorists, but all terrorists are Muslims. And it was very common on the media. And that gave rise to a new lecture of mine Is terrorism a Muslim monopoly? Time does not permit me to speak in detail about is terrorism a Muslim monopoly, but you're most welcome to see on the Peace TV or on a website. We know from the media that many a time two different labels are given to the same individual for the same activity. For example, more than 60 years back, there were many Indians who were fighting for the freedom of the country. These people, by the British government, they were called as terrorists. But we common Indians, we call these people as freedom fighters, as patriots. Same people, same activity, but two different labels. If you agree with the view of the British government that they had a right to rule over India, then you have to call these people as terrorists. But if you agree with the view of the common Indians that Britishers came to India to do business, they have no right to rule over us, then you have to call these people as patriots, you have to call these people as freedom fighters. Same people, same activity, but two different labels. And I very often attend the media, and while having interaction with the Indian press, ask them a question that do you consider Bhagat Singh as a terrorist? So he said, No. I said, Why? The same Western media, when they call Bhagat Singh as a terrorist, you say, No, he's not a terrorist. Why? Because you know the background of the history of India freedom. Even I consider Bhagat Singh as not to be a terrorist. But the same Western media, today, when they call Muslims terrorists, why do you agree? Have you done research? They started to laugh. <laughs> Quran says in Surah Ujura, chapter 49, verse number 6. Whenever you get information, you check it up before you pass to the third person. The point to be noted is that when the British government called Bhagat Singh a terrorist, you didn't agree. Now, why do you agree with them? Why these double standards? And you have several such examples. When we read the history of the American Revolution, in 1775, during the American Revolution, George Washington, he was called as the terrorist number one by the British government when the British were ruling America. The British has called George Washington as terrorist number one. Later on, when America gets its freedom, George Washington is made the president of USA. Imagine, terrorist number one becomes the president of USA. And he happens to be the godfather of all the presidents to come, including George Bush. And you find several such examples, several. You have the example of Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela, several decades earlier, when South Africa was ruled by the white apartheid government, Nelson Mandela was arrested and was imprisoned in Robben Islands for more than 25 years. By the white apartheid government, Nelson Mandela was called as terrorist number one. Later on, when South Africa gets its freedom and the white apartheid government is removed, Nelson Mandela is given freedom and he gets the Nobel Prize for peace. Imagine terrorist number one of the world gets the Nobel Prize for peace. Not that he was bad and he became good. For the same activity for what he was called a terrorist, 30 years later, he gets the Nobel Prize for the same activity, Nobel Prize for Peace. <laughs> so we realize whoever is in power, whatever label that person gives, that gets stuck on to that person. This is media. Media is very powerful. According to me, it is the most important weapon today. It can convert black into white, day into night, hero into a villain, villain into a hero. This is media. 
Unfortunately, we Muslims, we are very backward as far as media is concerned. Our technology, you know, whatever technology is halal, what is permitted in Quran and Sunnah, we have to use it. We have to convert it to halal. Television per se is not haram. I do agree, 99% things that come on television is haram. We have to convert the haram into halal. And that's how we have to convey the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best way today that you can convey the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the satellite channel. It is the media. At least we can give shahada, we can tell on the day of judgment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At least we tried our level best to let the message of Islam reach every home. Or at least as many homes as possible. And alhamdulillah, summa alhamdulillah, since three and a half years after the launch of Peace TV, now the viewership of Peace TV is more than 100 million. Alhamdulillah. People may be wondering that, you know, why are there so many cameras? People are saying, why 12 cameras required? One lecture, one man, 12 cameras. One man and 12 cameras. The television channel says, oh, you only use two or three cameras. 12 cameras because we want to present Islam in a beautiful manner. When you have rock show, that time 12 cameras, no problem. When Dai gives a lecture, why only two cameras? See, today is the age of science and technology. When we want to convince the youngsters, the media is taking them on the wrong track. We have to use the same media to get our youngster on the right track, from wrong track to the right track. And believe me, we know, I agree, that majority of the media is haram. But as long as we don't break any rule of the Sharia, of the Quran and Sahih Hadith, we can use this media to the benefit of the spread of Islam.